Hello everyone. Today in animal physiology, we'll be discussing regarding the physiology of hearing. Okay, myself, Sanat Kumar, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Common College for Women, Kola. Okay, let us get started. Now, so in before understanding the physiology of hearing, let us understand briefly regarding the structure of the ear. Ear is an organ of hearing and balance. Okay, so when we talk about the structure of the ear, it is mainly divided into three parts external ear, middle ear, and the inner ear. The external ear consists of all these parts of auricular ear, auditory meters, tympanic membrane, and the middle ear consists of tympanic cavity, ear ossicles, and the inner ear importantly consists of the labyrinth. Now, so in this picture, you can clearly see pinna auditory meters. This is the tympanic membrane constitute the external ear. And this red portion, tympanic cavity and the ear ossicles constitute the middle ear. And this is the internal ear. Okay. So now if you look at the uh, section of the ear, you can see the ear pinna sound waves pass through the ear pinna acoustic meters and uh, hit the tympanic membrane. And they are passed to the internal ear and uh, the sound perception occurs and interpretation occurs in the brain now let us try to understand how exactly this takes place now the inner ear it is as i said it is also termed as the labyrinth it is the main organ of hearing and balance now it is mainly made up of two parts bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth now between them between the bony labyrinth encloses the membranous labyrinth. It is in fact like a, a, a inserting a test tube inside the test tube, uh, that kind of a structure. I'm going to explain this in detail to you. And in between them, in between the bony and the membranous labyrinth, we have perilymph. And inside the membranous labyrinth, there is endolymph. Now, the bony labyrinth or the internal ear has the three important parts, vestibule, cochlea and uh, semilunar canals among them the vestibule and the semilunar canal help in balancing and the cochlea help in hearing now this is the structure of the internal ear you can see the presence of semilunar canals and this is the vestibular part and this is the cochlea you can see here the vestibular part uh, will help in balancing the individual so we are not talking about this here now we are very much interested in talking about this structure the organ of quality which is very much helpful in uh, bringing about the sound perception now the membranous labyrinth which is enclosed inside the bony labyrinth it is again having two parts one is a vestibule and the cochlear portion the vestibule is made up of utricle and saccule we have seen in the previous slide now the cochlea cochlea is a snail like structure which is uh, on section when you take a section of the cochlea you can see there is presence of three different uh, chambers now these three different chambers are separated but they are connected at a point known as the opening known as the helico trema now when you look at the three different chambers for well, the first chamber which is known as the uh, scala vestibuli the basal membrane of it is known as vestibular membrane and the membrane of the scala tympani it is known as the basilar membrane okay now the most important organ when we talk about the physiology of hearing that is the organ of cordy okay so with this brief structural details we shall try to understand the physiological aspect same thing you can just go through these points organ of cordy it is having supporting cells hair cells there is presence of tectorial membrane and uh, they connect the hair cells connect to the vestibular cochlea now okay so all this i shall try to explain to you in this picture now look at this picture uh, this is the external ear pinna and uh, auditory meters. This is the tympanum. These are the ear ossicles, middle ear portion. Now, if you look at the internal ear part, now uh, so it is a coiled structure, snail like structure we have seen. Now, in order to understand the structure of it, let us go uh, into the details of it. Now, I said it is a uh, like uh, it appears like a test tube inserted into another test tube this is the outer one this is the inner one this kind of a structure results in formation of the three chambers one two 
three. The upper one is known as the scala vestibuli, the middle one is known as scala media, and the lower one is known as scala tympani. Now, uh, in the previous slide, we have seen between the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth here, there is what is known as the perilymph, and in the scala media, there is endolymph that is filled. Now, I was talking to you regarding reason, uh, regarding uh, reasonous membrane and the basilar membrane. See, this is scala vestibuli, and this membrane is known as the reasonous membrane, and the membrane, this membrane which is above the scala tympani, it is known as the basilar membrane. Now, in the scala media, uh, on the basilar membrane, there is presence of this most important organ of hearing uh, that is known as the organ of corti. Okay, and this internal ear is connected to middle ear through two main openings. The one it is known as the oval window, and the second one is known as a round window. Okay, so this oval window, it is and round window, both of them are membrane bound. Okay, and they are uh, in fact covered by a membrane, which is essential. Uh, during the hearing. So I think you have understood the structure of it. Let us go to the section of the internal ear or the cochlea. The same uh, uh, structure, this one, we are taking a section like this and that section appears to be uh, like this picture. Now in this you can see the upper chamber is scala vestibuli, lower one is tympani, this is scala media and now on the basilar membrane you can see here the presence of the organ of corti and there is a membrane here a cellular membrane uh, known as the tectorial membrane okay so this part is very important during the physiology of hearing let us try to understand you can here you can see the hair cells are connected to a cochlear or a cochlear part of the auditory now okay now, if I enlarge the organ of CAR-T, you now you can see two important varieties of cells here. These are the hair cells on the anterior part of which having the cilia present here, which is into the endolymph and above them there is tectorial membrane and just below the hair cells, there are supporting cells, different types of supporting cells are there and all these hair cells which are almost which are nothing but the neuroepithelial cells these hair cells they have their axons connecting with the vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlea now which is also the eighth cranial now okay so it, it is important to understand these structural details before going to the physiological aspects okay now and let us come to exactly what happens when we hear a sound wave. The sound wave enters into the ear pinna. The ear pinna transmits the sound waves through the auditory meters to the tympanic membrane. Now the tympanic membrane, depending on the pitch of the sound wave, it starts vibrating. These vibrations are in turn passed on to the ear ossicles that are present in the middle ear. Remember that picture? Now, the, which are those ear ossicles? Malleus, sinkus, and stapes. Now, these starts moving due to the reception of the sound waves and the movement of the stapes will cause the movement, in and out movement on the membrane of the oval window. We have, uh, remember the previous picture, all these uh, structures we have seen, oval window membrane starts vibrating once the oval window membrane vibrates, the vibrations are passed on to the perilymph that is present in the scala vestibuli. Now, see, uh, vibrations pass on to the ear, uh, eardrum, ossicles, and going to the cochlea. Now, in the cochlea, inside this, the perilymph is vibrating. Now, let us see what happens further. These points we shall discuss. Now, the pressure in the perilymph is connected from scala vestibuli to the scala tympani because they are connected with each other. Now the scala vestibuli and scala tympani membrane starts vibrating. Now once these vibrations are passed on to the endolymph or the scala medial surface, the basilar membrane starts vibrating. This movement of the basilar membrane causes movement in the organ of CARTI, especially the hair cells that are present in the organ of CARTI, they start moving up and down. As a result, the hair 
that are present on the anterior part of the hair cells will start touching the tectorial membrane. Now, this touching of the hair to the tectorial membrane results in bending of the hairs of the hair cell. Understood? Now, this bending of the hairs of the hair cells results in entry of potassium ions into the air cells. This entry of potassium ions into the air cells ultimately results in formation of an action potential. This action potential that is generated in the hair cells will be communicated to the uh, auditory uh, center through the auditory nerve. Okay. Now, so let us... Uh, go back to this picture once now see the hair cells that are present here touch the tectorial membrane and this action potential that is generated in the hair cells action potential that is generated in these hair cells they will be transmitted through these axons and ultimately they transmit these action potentials to the vestibular cochlea now okay now so after understanding this, once it is received by the vestibular cochlea nerve, it reaches the auditory center of the brain where in interpretation of the sound takes place. Now, how does this uh, uh, action potential generated? Actually, before the uh, reception of the sound vibrations or the bending of the hair of the hair cells, the hair cells are in a hyperpolarized state. Now, the entry of potassium ions into the hair cells, potassium ions into the hair cells results in what is known as the generation of the action potential through depolarization. Understood? And this also results in entry of calcium ions into the hair cells at the bottom of the hair cells and entry of calcium ions release in formation of the neurotransmitter which is essential to transmit the information from one neuron to other neuron through the auditory nerve. Now finally, this neurotransmitter causes depolarization of the postsynaptic neurons and impulse reaches the auditory center of the brain. Now in the auditory center of the brain, the sound is interpreted, okay? Thank you. That is regarding the physiology of hearing. Now, for the uh, animated video of the structure of the ear, you can visit this link. Okay. Thank you all.